Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you what we are going to be creating over the next few videos. So a while ago, last year, I released a course on YouTube that showed you how to create a GraphQL server using the GraphQL.js library. Now I had a lot of questions uh, that came around from this. Uh, when are the next videos? Are we going to go into a little bit more detail? And are you uh, going to use some of the Apollo server things so you don't have to uh, sort of just write JavaScript objects uh, to define your GraphQL schema and resolvers. So in this course, we are actually going to do that. We are going to make some use of some great tools. We're going to be using Prisma we are by GraphQL, and we're going to be using the GraphQL Yoga and a bunch of other plugins, which we'll, uh, we'll uh, get into as the videos go on. But this video, I just wanted to kind of use as a, a deep dive and an overview of uh, what we are going to be building. Uh, so let's have a look at that now. So what we have is, uh, this is uh, the GraphQL Playground and it's built by, uh, initially by the guys over at Prisma uh, in GraphQL and uh, it, you know it's maintained by the community. And it's a great way to interact and use uh, GraphQL queries, invitations and subscriptions uh, and look at the documentation and uh, various, various other things which we'll get into. Um, so first and foremost, uh, what we'll do is just quickly have a look at documentation. We'll see exactly what uh, our schema looks like and what types of uh, queries, subscriptions, and mutations we can create. Uh, so over on the right here, if we click schema, we'll see that we have uh, our queries listed, our mutations, and subscriptions. So I kind of just want to walk through a simple flow uh, and show you what it is that we're going to be creating. So. If you are not already familiar uh, with Product Hunt, uh, Product Hunt is a website which you can go to and it shows all of the uh, posts that have been posted every day uh, that are new products, uh, games, books, uh, tech, uh, APIs, developer tools, design tools, all of those kind of things get published there and people can upvote and collaborate on them. It's similar to Reddit and Dig if you used those in the past, but what we are going to be doing in this video series is creating a GraphQL server that kind of acts the same way, uh, allows you to post to things, but uh, it will be restricted so you can only upvote uh, on a product uh, in an, in, uh, if today is that day. Uh, once the vote's over, the, you know, the, the product that uh, has the most votes kind of wins that day uh, and obviously you can only post for today as well. Um, so let's uh, dive right in and let's register. Uh, let's have a look and see what we have available to us uh, in the schema uh, type. So I'm gonna just uh, create my uh, register mutation here and uh, it takes in a few things. It takes in a name, which is a string. So I will uh, use my name here. And also it takes an email. Uh, I'm going to just uh, create a random email here and a password. We will just use password hello world. Then once our, our user uh, is created, the thing that we get back from this uh, is a auth uh, payload, which has a token type of string. And that's important because we'll need that to do some other things and that's what we'll pass as a bearer token. So let's go ahead and just close this out and let's hit run. Then we get this uh, token back and this is what we can use inside of our authorization header. So down the bottom in the GraphQL playground, if you hit on HTTP header, uh, you can then inside of here, just define an object uh, with a key of authorization and then the value would be bearer and a space followed by your uh, key as well, uh, your token that's provided from the login here. So if we try and run this mutation again, uh, it says it already exists. Uh, did you mean to sign in? Uh, of course, we can then uh, use another mutation. And if we have a look, and all I'm doing to get this uh, to appear, uh, is just by pressing control and space and that will pop up and show me. Uh, then I can immediately just try to uh, type inside of uh, these uh, parentheses and uh, it's immediately telling me that we need a, uh, an email and a password and both of those are required and that's defined by the uh, the exclamation mark or the bang on the end of uh, that word string uh, type. So if we um, pass in the same email as we uh, provided before and we pass in the same password, hello world, and then we get back the token, hit return, so we successfully logged in. 
Now, if we uh, don't provide the correct email or the correct password, we'll simply just get an error message back uh, that we've got an invalid email and password combination. And all of that is handled using the Apollo errors. Uh, and we'll go into how we connect that as well. Then let's move on. Let's have a look inside of the schema and see what else we have available to us in the mutations. Uh, what I would like to do is just run a query for posts today, and that will get us all the posts that have been made today. Uh, and you can see all we need to do there uh, is type one query posts today, and that will give us an array of all of the posts. And we can see what fields we have available to us here. We've got things like the name, the slug, tagline, and uh, many others. We've also got hunter, uh, makers, and comments, and topics, and votes. So all of this we are going to be creating in the next few videos. So if we just load up a new tab here, and then we create a new query, and we'll do posts today, then we will grab the ID, the name, uh, we'll grab the slug, the short uh, URL, uh, and then we'll hit run. So when we hit run there on obviously any posts, because this is a fresh server on Prisma, there's no data here except our users. So what we need to do next is actually post something, and we'll do just that now. So inside of here, let's have a look at a mutation, and I'm gonna open up again a new tab, and we are gonna run this mutation. And if we have a look in here, we can see that we have this mutation called create post. Then inside of the parentheses, what we'll then do is look to uh, add a URL, a name, a tagline, uh, and some topics. Uh, the status is uh, optional and by default, uh, it's set to available, um, but there are and will be other enum types such as not available, coming soon, in beta, things like that, and we'll dive into that as we build the server. Um, so before we can uh, kind of successfully create this, this topics uh, takes in uh, an array of uh, IDs of topics in our database. Now, I've already pre-populated the database with a seed of topics, uh, and we will learn how to do that in the next few videos. Um, but let's run a query now to see uh, all of the available topics that we have. So inside of a new tab, I'm just gonna create a new query here. I'm gonna ask for the ID because I need that to create my posts, and then I'm gonna grab the name. So similar to Product Hunt, we have tech, games, books, uh, APIs, developer tools, design tools, and yes, there are many more. Uh, feel free to add those if you wish, um, but this is all we need to kind of get going and show a few different post types. So we're actually gonna create our first post now, so let's go ahead and do that. So the first post that we create is gonna be this wonderful uh, Go package that is created by a friend of mine called Harry. Uh, you should go check it out on GitHub if you uh, want to uh, have a terminal-based uh, HTTP client. Uh, it's really good, really simple to use. It's definitely worth checking out. So this is the GitHub uh, repository here. This is the name. Uh, we obviously need to grab the URL, so I'm just gonna copy that now. I'm gonna head back into uh, this here and I'm gonna add the URL. Uh, and let's just break this out a little bit so it's easier to see what's going on. There, so we'll grab a name. Uh, the name is HTTPQ, and then we will add a tagline. And let's just grab uh, a sentence from the repo here. Great. So we quickly have a look at status, uh, and we can see we have available and coming. Uh, we'll just set it as available, but that's set by default, so you actually just don't need to define this in, in the GraphQL mutation. Uh, so the topics is what's left, and I would consider this to be uh, a developer tool. Um, so we're gonna grab this idea of the uh, developer tools topic from our topics query, and then back inside of create post, we will add that in there. There are a few other things uh, that we can get back. So we can get the name, uh, we can get the slug that's generated automatically for us. Uh, we'll grab the tagline, the, the status, and you can get all of the things that you're passing in, we can get that back. Uh, the short URL is created for us. Uh, what that allows us to do is when we uh, come to build the user interface for this, we don't just wanna show all of the products on the page and when someone hovers over the link to visit, they see the actual URL. We would like to be able to track how many people click on this product, and this is what we'll do with the short URL. And that's basically just an array that can then do a lookup and we can get the URL later. And all of those lookups will be recorded. So uh, we can also get the hunter and the hunter, we can obviously get the hunter's name. Uh, and because I've provided my uh, authorization token here, when I create this post, 
that relationship will be automatically created for me. And we'll learn how to do that in the tutorial as well. Uh, so I'm just going to grab the name. Nothing else is really important there. Uh, I'll also grab the votes. And the votes, obviously, uh, I want to grab who actually voted. And again, uh, this will automatically upvote the product when you create one. Uh, so we can go ahead and run this now. Great, so that successfully uh, created that here. And we have this data object and create post object, which contains the ID of our new post and the slug. So the slug, someone may post a product with a similar name, and all the slug does is takes the name, lowercases it, and then puts on a random uh, string on the end of that as well. Um, and that's just a way that we can use uh, uh, to make sure, you know, in a way that we can make sure that all URLs will be unique, that people visit to go and see the product. Then uh, we have obviously the short URL, and we explain why we needed that, and that's just a random ID that is created for us and stored in the database. Uh, we also have the hunter, which is me who signed up and created this post, and I'm obviously authenticated to do so. Then we have votes and the user of the vote, uh, name of that user as well, and of course that is me. Uh, so if we head back to the query for posts today, and we see uh, previously we didn't have any posts, if we hit run, you'll see that we now have that URL. So now we have a post on the page. We want to visit that post. We've upvoted it because we created it. And if we have a look inside of what available mutations we have, uh, we can also uh, upvote a specific product, uh, product or post itself as well. So if somebody else posts something, we can go in there. We can pass the ID uh, of the product we wish to upvote, and it will go ahead and do that for us. Uh, and obviously we can get back various things like post and, and who actually upvoted that as well. Uh, but this other thing here called a visit is uh, also important. And this is how we actually get the URL back from the database as to what the post is. And what this will do is it will track a visit in the database for who made that request. And you can see uh, vi the visit mutation requires the short URL. And the short URL was just that random string that I created. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll pass in the short URL and let's get back from this, the URL. And if this runs successfully and it finds a product by this ID, it will return the URL. And the fact that the ID that I selected wasn't found. And that's because uh, the ID that I selected was the post ID. And that's not the correct one. So if I paste this in here and we hit run, you'll see that we get the URL that comes back, which is simply great. There are a few other things that we'll create with this course. Uh, another thing is uh, creating, editing, and deleting comments. Uh, if you try to create a comment and you're not logged in, uh, it will simply just give you an error. Uh, so let's try and do that now. If we remove this here and we try and run a mutation, and we'll just do create comment. We'll pass in a post ID. Uh, so if we head back to our post today query and grab the ID of the post and place that into here, and then we pass in a message. Uh, I'll just break this onto a new line so you can see. Hello world. Then we try and get back uh, the ID of the post. What we should see is when we run this is you are not authorized. And that is using something called GraphQL Shield. And that's another uh, piece of GraphQL middleware. And we'll walk through how to create and connect those middlewares for the different user types. Uh, also, this applies to editing comments. So if you've made a comment, only you can edit that comment. And also, if you wish to delete something, only the author of that comment can uh, delete the comment as well. Uh, finally, uh, one of the other things that we will create um, is this thing for subscriptions. So if we look to uh, create a new post, uh, we can uh, subscribe to new posts. So on the actual UI of this website, when we get around to creating it, uh, we can have the homepage automatically update as new posts are submitted to the database. And that's all built into uh, GraphQL Yoga. All of that is connected with the PubSub server there. Uh, so there's not really any configuration we need to do. That's all just handled uh, for us out of the box. But we'll walk through how we can connect that uh, and distribute that and deploy that later. Um, so let's have a quick look at the post uh, subscription payload. And um, let's just see what we need to do there. So we've got this new posts and new post subscription payload. 
if we open up a new tab and we type subscription and we hit new posts, we can actually grab the in the node uh, and the node is the record that's created to and within GraphQL uh, objects of things that are on a database are often referred to as uh, nodes. And if you've used uh, anything uh, similar to GraphQL, the word node may be similar. Um, then we'll just grab the name and we'll grab uh, the uh, tagline. And if we run this subscription, it's busy listening now for any new posts that are created. So let's go back to the other tab that we created. Uh, if we try and post this again, it will give us an error because uh, the URL is not unique. So I'm just gonna fake this right now and just add a, uh, a two to the end of that one to make it slightly different. It's gone ahead and created it. Then if we go back to the new post tab, we should see that we have this new post uh, come right in here. Um, if we head back to uh, create posts and we change this to three and we'll put the three on here and we run that again, if we head back, we should also see that we have the first one and then we have uh, the second or the third uh, copy of this post. So you can see how this is really useful if a user interface is subscribing to that, uh, we should be able to just populate the page. Uh, and the same applies to comments as well. Um, if somebody uh, would wishes to uh, record, new, record new comments, uh, they can do that as well. And they can get things like who posted the comments, uh, what the actual uh, post was. Um, if someone's edited the comments, uh, you could create subscriptions to subscribe to any uh, changes to comments. So you can also get the previous values of the comments. Um, which is really helpful as well. Uh, lastly, uh, while, we, uh, well, while we are logged in, uh, I would like to just run a query um, for uh, showing us the current user. And we can do that um, by running a simple query called me, and we can grab the name, uh, the email perhaps, and uh, anything that I've hunted. Uh, so I've posted a few things now. Um, I can run this query and you can see that I've hunted uh, this and this and this uh, three times and any comments I make can also obviously be put in here as well. Um, I don't have any comments but uh, if we were to create one those would appear in the same way as uh, posts do as well. Um, we've also got votes so if you wanted to display a profile and we will create a profile um, that shows us what posts we voted on. So not only can we post something and it's automatically upvoted, we can go to others and vote as well. Um, so we can see the ID and the, the name of those posts as well. And you can see uh, we have these here as well. So that sums uh, this video up. This is just a uh, brief intro and a deep dive into exactly what we are going to be creating. Uh, we will be using uh, Prisma, so you'll need an account when we'll walk through setting that up and the CLI. We'll be using the GraphQL CLI and we'll set that up. Uh, all of that will be, uh, we'll go through all of that in the next few videos. So hopefully uh, this has been a, uh, an overview uh, that interests you. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to showing you uh, and getting this course pushed online. So over the next few weeks, I'll be pushing a series of videos for each step. Um, we'll just focus for now creating the server, then we'll move to create the actual React user interface, which I'm absolutely excited to do as well. Um, so yeah, hopefully this is good. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment below. Please subscribe, turn on the notification so you get uh, notified immediately as uh, these videos are uploaded. And of course, uh, subscribe, uh, share this with others who are looking to get started with GraphQL. I'm really excited to uh, teach and show others on some of the things that I do um, on a daily basis with GraphQL. Uh, so yeah, um, also if you'd like to donate, uh, I'll put a link to my PayPal page in the comments if you uh, would like to donate. Uh, you don't have to. Um, these videos do take time, um, so it's quite nice. I can use some of that to put towards software and editing um, and uh, anything else that I need equipment wise for this. Um, and maybe uh, donating some of that back to uh, Prisma and uh, through Open Collective for some of the tools that I'm using. So check out that, uh, subscribe, leave a comment if you uh, have any questions, um, but I'm really looking forward to this. Have a great day, happy coding, and I'll see you next time.